Welcome to Finance Basics 10 from TeachExcel.com. Here I'm going to show you how to do a present value calculation with intra-year compounding of interest. And in this particular example, I'm going to show you how to figure out how much you need to invest now in order to get a certain amount in the future with a certain interest rate, which is compounded semi-annually. So the question is, how much should you invest in a security which yields 8% interest compounded semi-annually in order to have $75,000 in five years. Now I've got the present value function listed right here so you can reference it anytime you need to. All the arguments are listed um, but we're not going to go through it uh, step by step this time in too much detail. So the first thing we need equals PV open parentheses. Now it's very important to know that anytime that you are compounding your interest more often than once a year, you're going to have to adjust the rate, the number of periods, and where applicable, the payment number. And all of these, uh, all the things you have to do here, it's very similar to the Finance Basics 9 tutorial, just present value instead of future value. So basically what you need to do is look at the problem, figure out what your rate is. It is 8%. Now when it says something like this, uh, which yields 8% interest, that means that that is 8% for the entire year. Always remember that, 8% for the entire year. So the standard period is going to be one year. And here, since it's compounded semi-annually, that would mean every six months, you need to adjust the interest rate for that. So it's not 8%, instead it's 4%. The way you do that is very simply 8 divided by 2. So 8 divided by 2 equals 4. If it was compounded monthly, there are 12 months in a year, it would be 8 divided by 12. I'll go over how to switch that up at the end, but let's just focus on finishing this problem first. So 8% interest compounded semi-annually. We got to divide that to account for it, so it's 4% every six months. So the interest rate is 0 0.04. Remember, always enter the rate as a decimal, comma. Now we need the number of periods. Well, the number of periods is, uh, in sta if it was standard, it would just be five for five years. But since a period in this example is six months, we need to multiply five years by two. So we have 10 periods. So 10 for the number of periods. So the reason we have that is because we have to change all of our numbers to reflect the semi-annual compounding. Since semi-annual means every six months, there are two six months within every year, right? Six plus six is 12. So we do two times five equals 10, comma. Now for the payment, we're not going to worry about that for this one because this is not an annuity problem. We don't have an equal series of cash flows going in or coming out. So what you can do here is simply put a zero or you can leave it blank and add another comma. Now the future value is simply going to be what we'd like to have after the five years or 10 periods. That would be 75,000. So I type seven, five, one, two, three, 75,000. Go ahead and close parentheses, hit enter, and we see that the present value of this, or what we have to invest today, is going to be $50,667.31. Now it's a negative sign because the present value is represented as a cash outflow. But if you don't like negative numbers, an easy way to fix that is to simply go to the front of the present value equation type a minus or negative sign and hit enter. It's not going to change calculation at all, simply makes a negative or turns negative into a positive. All right, now I want to make sure that um, I go over with you again how to account for different compounding periods, so semi-annual, quarterly, monthly. Okay, so I'm going to go through a little bit slower and teach you a neat way to try and help you remember it. So equals PV, open parentheses. Now our rate is 8%. Remember, like I said, whenever they say that, it always is going to mean by default 8% per year. Okay, so 
let's type it in 0 0.08 always keep it as a decimal but the problem is our interest is compounded semi-annually that means when it, if it's compounded more than once a year we have to adjust the rate the number of periods and the payment numbers accordingly so the rate it's eight percent per year so what is it if it's semi-annual well what is it every six months well it's 8 divided by 2, or 4. So we do 0 0.08 divided by 2. And you can think of this as 2 times 6, or 6 months, is 12 months, and that equals a year. And you know that it's 6 months because semi-annual means every 6 months. So basically, what do you have to divide by here to make the number of periods equal to 1 year? Now, comma, the number of periods. Let's type in a 5, because we're doing sticking with the years, right? So the number of periods is, well, it's 5 years. But how many periods? We're doing semi-annual. So a period, in this case, is every 6 months. How many 6 months are in a year? Two 6 months are in a year. So we multiply that by 2. Now let's go ahead and fill out the rest real quick, and I'll show you how to change this up. So payments, we got nothing. So I'm just going to put a 0 there or put another comma to get to the future value. Future value is how much we want in the future, 75,000. So that's it. Oh, one last thing I'll say is the type. By default, this means that any payment amount is going to be paid in at the end of the year. So if you are filling in annuities for the payments, um, by default, this function is going to say you're paying that annuity at the end of the year. If you want to pay it at the beginning of the year, you simply put a 1 for the type. Otherwise, it'll assume you're paying at the end. So you're paying annuity at the beginning of the year, put a 1 for the type argument, otherwise leave it blank. Okay. We don't have a payment here, though, or annuity, so we're not going to worry about it. Now, what happens if you want to do this monthly? Okay. So what you want to say to yourself is, how many months does it take to make one year? It takes 12 months to make one year. So that's the rate divided by 12. Now, how many months does it take to make a year? 12. 5 times 12. Then, this formula now says that the interest is compounded monthly. Now, I'll show you real quick one more time. What if it's compounded quarterly? Well, how many quarters does it take to make a year? It takes 4. So we simply change the 12 to a 4. How many days does it take to make a year? Well, you could do 360, or you could do 365, depending on how you want to do that. But the point is, this number here is simply how many periods it takes to make one year. I'll switch it back to 12 months. Now, it's very important that this is all in relation to my question, right? Up here, I have 5 for 5 years. If the problem that you are getting tells you this for a different number of uh, a different time frame so say it says five months instead of five years then you won't have to adjust it down here so always be very careful to make sure that you line up the number of periods for the rate number of periods and the payment whatever they are so let's see how much you would get in this case or how much you need to invest put a negative sign up here a little bit less you know about three hundred and twenty seven dollars less but either way, that's how you can get the present value um, when there is intra-year compounding.